This is the PodCraft Beer Show for Monday, July 5th, 2021. Episode 51 samples four unique craft beers created to celebrate Southern California's Bottle Craft Beer Shop and Tasting Room's 10th anniversary. This is the PodCraft Beer Show. I'm your host, Chris. We got your other host, Charlie. Yo, what's happening? We got tech guy, Steve. Hello, and we're recording this time. <laughs> we uh, may have, uh, we had a little snafu there with our, get okay. you a little, I'm this good. one I haven't drank up. Uh, sorry. Yeah. I'm good. Well, so the, uh, so we got a couple beers here today, guys. We, uh, uh, so it's the 10th anniversary of Bottlecraft. Uh, they, they did uh, four different, um, four different beer releases today with, uh, with some local breweries. Uh, Great Notion. Um, they did a beer with Great Notion, Ennegrin out of out of Moore Park in, in L.A., uh, Ferris Falcon, uh, which is Mason and Horace, and then finally uh, Modern Times. So we have all four of those. Today we're going to start off with Great Notion. This is a tart, tart ale with pineapple, lime, coconut, and vanilla. Dig in. Mm. So this Samson's Tropical Vacation. Uh, you know, fruited sour comes in seven and a half percent. Smells pretty darn the, um, good. Yeah, a lot of lot of coconut. I think of vanilla on that I nose. I smell coconut. So you don't? I smell pineapple and uh, what else is in there, dog? Vanilla, vanilla yeah. pineapple, coconut. I smell pineapple and lime and vanilla. I don't even smell the coconut. So they say this beer is uh, brewed in uh, in honor of Samson Bottlecraft Little Italy's uh, resident shop dog, but the um, that vanilla really smooths it out. Um, that's a, that's a good beer. Second yeah. release of this, it came out, this was their ninth anniversary beer. This year it's their 10th, 10th anniversary. Yeah. But what I dig is that they went to four different breweries to, uh, to get their anniversary beers out. That's pretty cool. So they involved everybody from stouts all the way down to a, uh, Pilsner. Now this says it's a tart ale, yeah. not a sour. Tart. Well, it's sour. It's like a kettle sour. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know what the yeah it's a, it's a it's certainly a kettle sour. They're, I mean, it's like and this is not it. like a normal like the normal sours that we've had before. Where this tastes right, really, really sweet. It'd be more along the the lines of their um, like their uh, their fruit monster. I know right. we've done that like mm-hmm. on that whole, uh, but not like a wild ale. Right. So like they're they're dumping their um, like it's all done in the brewery, like mm-hmm. not with like wild uh, yeasts or anything. Super it's good, super, super tasty, super wow, sweet, wow. super tasty. You can taste all those flavors in there. Like I said, I don't smell the coconut, but I taste it, and I taste it with you know the two other fruit and then the vanilla. It's pretty dang on good, pretty impressive actually. That's super good it, uh, beach beer. Mm-hmm. Mm. Yep, good beach beer. That's an all day beach beer. That's tasty. I don't know how long at seven uh, percent, but super super tasty. I don't think I could drink too many of those. Maybe a can. Can would be good. That's all I need. What's your next beer, Charlie? Uh, we're going to run through the uh, Pilsner from Integrin. And I can't say that word. Charzit. Motueka Pilsner, 4.8%. Like how Charlie takes Motueka and leaves me with translation <laughs> of yeah, German Jim. for decades. Yeah, yeah. So the um, the beer here with uh, with, with Integrin, ja- ja- Jarent? Is that it? Jarrant. 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 It means anniversary, right? It means decade. Decade. German. Smells fantastic. I mean, that worst as far as uh, um, translating or any any type of. Uh, but here's here's your word here. Yatzint. 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 Yeah, that sounds so much better. Yep. J a r. Yatzint. J a r z e h n t. Which is pronounced Yatzint. <laughs> Yatzint. How about Motueka Pilsner? That's what it's pronounced mm. as. Yes. So it's a it's a four point eight percent Pilsner made by uh, Ennegrin out of Moore Park. Been doing uh, um, it's their tenth anniversary as well as uh, Bottlecraft. So two of the two of the heavyweights here in Southern California. Super light, super fresh, super tasty Pilsner. Mm-hmm. Like Charlie had mentioned, it's a uh, it's a um, a single hop, New Zealand uh, Motueka hops, uh, gives it that zesty tropical flavor. Uh, they say this rotating uh, this rotating hop series is based off uh, this lager uses the 
the same traditional hopping uh, techniques for each one of the beers. They always use the same grain bill and the same mash profile for each beer. So it really just gives you, you know, how does each each hop line mm. up against the the other beer? I they like are, it. They're super talented. It's it's definitely a lawnmower drinker with that four point eight. And these are pretty available in San Diego, right? So today, yeah. So it just released today, um, you know, at at Bottle Craft only. So um, I'm, I, I think the majority of the beers that we'll have today. So the the Samsons, that's Bottle Craft only. This is Bottle Craft only. Mm. Um, or they they did say it would be limited release in Moore Park at their tasting room. The Ferris Falcon, Bottle Craft. They had quite a bit of it at Bottle Craft. Uh, it'll be a, a a club release this week for for Mason and, and uh, Horace members. The Modern Times was available at Bottlecraft, and then they released this week as well. I think it made their public sale I don't know. today. I believe their public sale goes on. Um, Neon Campfire. Neon Campfire is that, but but those were available through through those locations. Doubtful they'll end up being elsewhere yeah. with, you know, like down at uh, Ryan Bottlecraft's 10th anniversary <laughs> at, you know best damn beer shop or but the um so i would assume that's phenomenal i would love to be able to get that uh i don't think i've ever had though an ennegrin beer where i've been like nah, i don't know if it hit the mark you know because uh, you kind of yeah. know what you're looking what you're getting right what you're going after you're, you're looking for like a crispy boy or um i think they've just been phenomenal 4.8 percent you can that's that's what you're you know that's a monday through thursday beer and then these other ones are you know little higher on the notch uh the next one we're going to jump to is a ipa from uh ferris falcon called bee and bird and it's uh smelling pretty legit so that bee and bird um that's a uh a ferris falcon so mason ale works uh and horace aged ales um it's a uh you got a description. I got it right here. Dry hopped double IPA with Cascade, El Dorado, Enigma, Honey, and Lactose. Yeah, there you go. 8.6%. Ooh, that's up there. It smells, that lactose smells delicious. Yeah. Yeah. So the um, uh, Kyle had mentioned the artwork of this can was done by his daughter. Uh, that's awesome. She had, uh, <laughs> she drew the, uh, the, the bee, bee and, and the bird. bird. That's great. Um, and then, uh, which is, is pretty cool. That's mm. uh Wow. It's different, isn't it? Yeah, it's really... I like it. It's nice and smooth. That, that lactose knocks down a lot of that bitterness. Mm-hmm. So, good for him, man. Good job. I love I love the smell of it. Taste of it is is So, uh, just a unique. double IPA. Yeah, double IPA, not, not, not a hazy IPA. It almost tastes like vanilla-y, you know? But I think that's... Is there milk sugar you said in there? Yeah, that's the lactose. That's yeah. the milk sugar, yeah. That'll do it every time. Yeah, so it's certainly like, you know, um, you're thinking a double IPA with a lot of that that honey and that lactose, I think, really kind of smooth it out. It's kind of sweet. Yeah, it is. Mm-hmm. Um, Sweeter than I expected, that's for sure. Yeah. That's great. I'd drink that any day of the week. Mm. So do you have any good beers this week? I, you know, I um, humble C, uh, mm-hmm. the, uh, the C3PO. All right. Uh, West Coast IPA. Man, they they make some of the best West Coast IPAs <laughs> in the business because they're on the West Coast. Mm-hmm. I mean, literally, they're uh, hey, they're phenomenal. I'm a big fan of the old West Coast, and um, they do it right. I think that and those San Diego, those San Diego pale ales they do, or the West Coast pale ales. Yeah, I should say. How about you guys? The R two D two one was good. R two D two. R in the C three P O is C E A, right? Yes. Yeah. 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 Yep. Yeah. They also had what was yeah it was R two D two C three PO and then I had one that was uh, Shreddy Van Whalen. Yeah, <laughs> it was a foggy and mm-hmm. it was delicious. It was a double dry hop, but I also worked on. Uh, we got some Burning Beard, the were Vul- Vultures Fair and uh, Party Cup from North Park. So mm, that was cup. those are just like delicious. So I had my son in law in town and him and I. Went to a couple places. Oh, and I got these crazy good things from uh, Creative Creature. Did a collaboration with um, Mason Ale Works and did Mason McCreature. And it's a fruited 
smoothie? Or? It's like an acai bowl. Oh uh, my gosh, it was amazing. with the garbage pail kid front. Yeah. Uh, like, <laughs> like the, um, you remember those garbage mm-hmm. pail kids? That's yeah. like the, the, the sticker on the it. Sticks, yeah. Yeah. The wrap. It's, it's absolutely phenomenal. If you're not, if, you, if you're in Elko and you don't stop by there and grab that, you're crazy because it's, that's how good it is. Mm. Bananas. Oh, it's bananas, good. acai, blueberry, and raspberry, and vanilla, I think. It was just super, super tasty. And they, they're doing a new slushy every day there. Uh, and they, it's, it's uh, off of some sort of seltzer, you know, whatever seltzer they pour in there. And then they bu- put a bunch of fruit flavor in there and just, oh, mm. you can get a slushy. Fantastic. Huh. So we tried them out. Plus, they had, uh, they had a couple other ones in there. Uh, it was uh, Leprechaun in the Barrio, I think. So that was pretty good. That was an, uh, an Irish ale with a uh, Mexican lager twist type hmm. thing to it, which was pretty interesting. Great can graphics. Mm-hmm. But uh, that was a collaboration too. But uh, definitely that, uh, it was good. But the other one was, uh, the fruity one was much, much, much more impressive. So that's what I did. I forgot to mention that. So cheers. There Ferris you go. Falcon did a great job. That's a good beer. I think the, um, you know, I, I, I don't know how f- big of a fan of lactose I am in my IPAs because I like that West Coast. Like I like it, like the bitterness of them. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, I like the thin malty, um, you know, the thin maltiness, the the over hop, like that bitterness. The, um, and I think that that lactose dulls that out a little bit. You know, it, and the the honey makes it a little sweeter. So I don't know if it's my my favorite of the Ferris Falk. It's a great beer. I mean, it's certainly an easy drinker, and I think you know when it's when it's kind of warm out, like it's, uh, it's tasting tasting good right now. I think yeah. shade tree beer, definitely shade tree beer. Not lawnmower. No, beers. it's yeah, it's a good beer, yeah. but it's you know I mean it's a uh, I'm looking for a little more of you know they have a great uh, great hop profile in there. I think I want to I want to taste those yeah hops. yeah those hops those all three like vice the Cascade El Dorado and Enigma together. Mm. So Chris's version of this just drops the honey and lactose. That's right. If anybody's listening. That's right. Yeah, we just get rid of the lactose and the honey. We'll see, yeah, how, well, we'll see how it goes. And keep running. When he gets uh, his own brewery, we'll worry about that, yeah. won't we? <laughs> It'll be, we'll have to rename it the ant and the... <laughs> <laughs> to what? <laughs> the ant and the what's the smaller version of the bird. Ant and the t- tick. <laughs> <laughs> and the bar. The uh, No, it's a great beer, though. I'm... Uh, I'm excited that they were part of that collaboration, that they were, um, you know, um, big fan of, of what yeah. those guys do, both the breweries. So speaking about uh, lawnmower beers, what did you think of that article? Yeah, so so Steve sent out a, uh, an article that, that pointed out to uh, some of the best lawnmower beers. They're low ABV uh, beers. They, uh, they, they actually mentioned uh, San Diego uh, was, was on there with... Um, uh, the little brother of Sculpin on there from Ballast Point. They had a 4.2 uh, Wee Gus is what it is. Uh, 4.2 ABV uh, lawnmower beers is, is is what they say. But uh, what's your guys' favorite lawnmower beer? You say, Charlie, got a low ABV guy you like, Steve? Party cup all day long. You're a party cup guy? No. I, mean, yeah, it was no. like, I haven't really had one before. No, yeah, yeah. Like I can't get enough of it. Right. No, it's a that's a great beer. <laughs> we pre-gamed with Party Cup today. So. Yeah. I like, you know, like I think for a long time, like my favorite Pilsner in town was Rain. At, uh, I remember when they released that the first time. Is that 5% though, isn't it? Um, gosh, it's got to be close. Maybe maybe it's 5%. 5.5, 5, 5.2. Um, I, I remember they had an IPA release and people were lined up for the IPA that they released. And I got up there and I'm like, I'll take a case of rain, right? Like, <laughs> wait in line to get a case of Pilsner. <laughs> they were. Uh, it's, it's readily available. <laughs> yeah, it's super. Now it now it's available, but but at that point they that was the first uh, the first release that they had made. It's five point three percent. See, it's a little heavy. Yeah. A little heavier than that, but it's still great. What does society's light beer come in at? It um, is. It's four point eight. I think. Is it? Yeah. Or less, but I think I it's think four, it's less than that. I think it's four point eight. Pretty sure. Don't hold me to that. And the integrated pilsner is four. Four point five is the uh, is the light beer. Yeah, good enough. That's a great number. 
That's yeah. That's really like that's a, that's probably a really good. And it is. Here. It is. Yeah. I mean, how they could pass up. I mean, Anagrin, uh pure society. Even even uh, modern times has great loggers and pilsners. I mean, they're just delicious. Sure. But then you have you know who's gonna who's gonna pass on a Montucky cold snack? Yeah, I yeah. wouldn't. Yeah. That's an old guy. Uh, what were some of the other ones on that list? I don't know. The other, other ones, um, so they're they started the list off with a with Yingling. Uh, they have a light lager. That's mm. a four uh, percent. Yeah, Yingling's huge on so the east coast. Yingling's regular is four point four percent, and their light is four point two. <laughs> yeah, they get three point two grams of carbs in there. They're uh, they're capturing that uh, that ninety nine calorie. Mm -hmm. I think yeah. uh, ninety nine calorie beer. So get under that hundred calorie. Triathlon and, uh, guys are drinking that. You know, mm -hmm. and then Cross um, uh, Roadhouse Brewing, the Highwayman, comes mm -hmm. in at four percent. It's a four percent pilsner. Um, Let's see who else is on there. Grim has got a, a light beer on there. Um, and Ballast Point at four point two percent. And then Deschutes. Mm. All of them looks like four point two is on the high end of what they're what they're calling their their beer. So it's difficult to get a full flavor there. You know, at that range, mm -hmm. like well, you know what though? I mean, they're they must have been not drinking a lot of beers. No, right? Because like I think of like because you could you could do you can count ten on your hand from San Diego alone. Mm -hmm. Sure. Yeah. But we don't know how these things are written. No. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> yeah, right. Biasly, but if obviously. But they're looking for like something low ABV that's yeah. accessible to a lot of people. Yeah. Those breweries right there cover large swaths of the country. Right, right. You know, that's yeah. probably what they have. Some they I, probably have some criteria. Does it? Right. Uh, doesn't like, uh, Stone have a locker that's? I, I don't readily know. Readily available so. anywhere. Yeah. They I do. I know I they, do. they do. do they? Yeah, know. it's everywhere. Log is it? Let's logger? see what it is. I don't think they have a logger. Yeah, they do. I'm going to just uh, look. Stone logger. If they do. So I you owe me it. a beer. Right. <laughs> and you, but if Charlie, better yet, I'll buy you. I'll buy you this beer if you can go find Stone's Lager. I can. <laughs> the Tropic of Thunder Lager. Yeah, it's available. Sprouts, mm. guaranteed. Mm. Let's see. Steve actually checked it in a year ago. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> he didn't even remember. Somebody checked it in 16 minutes ago. Yeah. They're, the, the last few people that have checked this beer in are in Europe, Charlie. So <laughs> I, I don't know how accessible it's They're making a lot of us. it over there now. I mean, like, Sir Gutsding, Richter, Kotcher, yeah. Mega Pale Ale. All right. That's let's move own. on. I apologize if I've interfered in your broadcast, but... Uh, we're getting into this one now. A little modern times. Oh, look at that lovely darkness. Oh, this this smells magical. Mmm. <laughs> oh boy. I smell marshmallows. Two things that Charlie's uh, this this beer is named after. Two things Charlie's a fan of: campfires and neon. <laughs> 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 the, uh, yeah, two places I hang out. <laughs> around the campfire and around some neon. So they uh, so they say this is um, in honor of uh, the 10th anniversary. They they got some of their favorite San Diego bottle slingers, uh, the, the uh, bottle slinging craft people to concoct this exorbitantly decadent campfire stout. They started with a two-row base, flaked oats, crystal extra dark, roasted barley, uh, chocolate malt, pale chocolate malt, cherry wood smoked malt, victory malt, double roasted crystal, 66 pounds of uh, cacao nibs, and cacao. 150 gram, or 150 pounds of uh, graham crackers, mm. Ugandan vanilla, and then toasted marshmallows for an additional five days. It smells fantastic. Mm. The um, so modern times, like makers of some of my favorite pastry stouts like i think you know one of the one of the best wow. stout makers in town um so definitely you know, smell that malt the roastiness and it pours with a nice head nice um it's not super viscous has no stick to the lay stick to the glass type of thing but i haven't tasted it yet i'm waiting on you so we're at 13 percent on this uh this guy here yeah there ain't no uh they didn't know lawnmower beer. Mm -hmm. The Tropic of Thunder is 5.8%. Yeah. I don't think it falls in the right, right. category. <laughs> it's more of a pale ale. That's really like 
really kind of smoky, I think. Like the, you definitely taste all that malt that they have in there. It goes on and on. Lots of chocolate. Wow. Yeah, it does. You know, it's got like kind of a smoky. Um, we just had that uh, that Fair State mm -hmm. um, smoky beer, I think. Kind of has that, that so it, not, I mean, a completely different style of beer, but it, you definitely taste like kind of that smoked malt in there, don't you? Yeah. Yeah. It's smoky. I do. Mm hmm. I thought it'd be tasting a lot more of the other uh, adjuncts, but obviously I'm not, so I'm going to have to take another peeky boo. Cocoa, vanilla, graham cracker, and marshmallows. I'm not tasting marshmallows or graham crackers. I don't like, um, I mean, I don't think like, uh, and I, I think our beers are warm enough here that normally, mm. you know, they're, it doesn't seem super cold. I think you're probably 55, 58 degrees. Just randomly throw out numbers. 72, mine says. It doesn't feel like 72. But it's yeah. It's not partying with me. It's warmer than most. Yeah, it's really, really smoky. I think it's really chocolatey. I don't taste like a... I, I'm not picking out any vanilla in there. It's tasty. I mean, I like that style. I mean, maybe they... How, did they say the amounts of stuff they put in it there? They that did. Would be yeah, helpful. they say 66 pounds of uh, cacao nibs, 150 pounds of graham crackers. Is it cacao or cocoa? What do you want it to be? Well, I like cacao, but... Uh, Let's say cocoa. Let's see. Let me ask my home, my friend here. Cocoa. It's cocoa nibs. Hmm. Cocoa. Cocoa. Cacao. Yeah, it'd be interesting if they had like some sort of numbering scheme. So, you, you know, there's 1.7... Of chocolate, 0. 0.5 of vanilla. <laughs> right, so it's like some type of consistency, because like yeah. how big of a like a batch are they making, right? Mm -hmm. Just enough to fill these cans. That's what they're doing. No, I think it's pretty good. You know, I think um, once again, you know, we uh, like there's there's not, not any down. vanilla in there, I'm not right? Let down. So there's not no totally not oh, yeah. let down. But I think that's it. You know, like a lot of the stouts we we drink have vanilla in it, right? Mm -hmm. So like you have that like. Mm. smoothing like it's really you know really rounds the edges where like this is just like super um kind of i don't know, not even I, I guess that maybe i expect it to be sweeter mm. you know it, it seems like it's got like all of that like that flavor there like the chocolate that mm. you would expect to it's warmed up enough to where we're going to be tasting every bit of it so it is what it is at this temperature oh, sure. I, I would do it again no i could drink can of that for sure Especially on a cold summer night, you know, about seventy-four degrees. Yeah, we got probably about two hundred days till we see those, uh, those cold nights again. Yeah, maybe at least a hundred days. Hundred days, hopefully. <laughs> yeah, that sounds really bad. That sounds really bad, doesn't it? Hot <laughs> is a long <laughs> time. Now and Christmas, so. right? No, I don't. We're probably a good hundred and over a hundred days, though, huh? Hundred days of a hundred degrees. That's what Vegas does. Mm. Eesh. Yeah, 100 days of over 110 is what it is. Yeah. Yeah. It's craziness. It was like 127 at Death Valley. 128. So insane. Like, so Can you imagine your go. tires start melting? Yeah, no, that's uh, that's bananas. <laughs> well, so guys, so we started, we... Uh, I'm sorry, I got to tell this. We got a delivery of caramels. <laughs> They're all melted in the bag. Right. It's so hot. Right. <laughs> like, this guy just brings it out. It's one caramel. Yeah. <laughs> just gnawing it like a salt lick. All right. <laughs> yeah. We haven't been back in the office for so long. And I, I had had a bowl of um, Jolly Ranchers. Yeah. And it was basically just one big. One Jolly Rancher. <laughs> it was this big bowl of sugar, <laughs> of sugar. The whole thing had melted over the summer. And then right. the, the you know, winter and everything. Like you get a scoby out of that dang thing, you'd be out, you'd be legit. That'd be the something else. There Can it you is. Imagine guys. that. So we uh, so four beers today. Bottle crafts, tenth anniversary. Yeah, we went through them pretty quick. We did. Yeah, we ran twenty six minutes. Yeah, but there, perfect. Yeah, that's, uh, that's perfect. We only had to do it twice. <laughs> the um, so we uh, we we had started off with uh, Great Notion, uh, the Samson. Uh, What's, what's the name? Samson's... Samson's Tropical Vacation. Samson's Tropical Vacation. Steve, you get a, you get a name the next beer. Mm -hmm. um, the, uh, <laughs> the really cool German name. Yeah, yeah. so we, uh, then we ended up with an Ennegrin, a um, 
Motueka uh, Pilsner. Motueka Pilsner. The, the anniversary, the, the decade beer. That was phenomenal. Followed that up with the Ferris Falcon, the, the Bee and the Bird. Uh, and then uh, then ended with the uh, the Neon Campfire. Are we going to choose our best one? What's your favorite beer? Steve? I'm going to go with Ingrid. If I had to drink another, if I got stuck on a desert island, that's going to be my new thing. Oh. If I'm stuck on a desert island, I don't think You know what? I don't want to right? force feed myself uh, stuck on the desert island because... You'd have to be on a boat, and I'm not getting on a boat to go on a desert hey, island. Well, I'll tell you what. If I'm getting on a boat, I'm bringing uh, a couple four-packs of that uh, that Motueka Pilsner. You know what? I'm going to bring a four-pack of each, of that and the Ferris Falcon. <laughs> yeah, I, um, I, I I think I'm going with that Ennegrin. It was, I mean, I think, you know, that we had some really good delicious. beers there. Mm-hmm. Right? You know, we've, uh, um, and I, I kind of knew what to expect with the, with the Samson's. I know I liked that last time. Um the uh gosh yeah i'm going i'm going Ennegrin. you know i'm going with that that pilsner was phenomenal i definitely uh i could drink that the rest of the summer yep no i liked it too i just i just would want to sort of a mix if i was stuck on a desert yeah, yeah. oh you want to you want to be able to cuvee yeah, that uh yeah, yeah. That Ennegrin with yeah. some of that uh, that bird and the bee. No, I just have them separated. I'd, I'd go from one side of the campsite to the other <laughs> and have beers and you know. On feel the north like I'm, I, yeah, north I'm, end of the <laughs> island, there's today we're serving the bird and the bee. <laughs> it would be great. Yeah. We now, could you imagine being service. being on a desert island and then you start up a brewery? <laughs> <laughs> For one, you'd be using a lot of coconut. coconut. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. A lot of coconut. Coconut and salt. Well, there it is. I'm, I'm glly we got to try all of those beers, and yep, I'm for definitely sure. looking forward to uh, having some more of those. Cheers, Till next. Brother. Hey, next next time, next episode's 52. Two. One year anniversary. One year. So we'll, uh, we'll have some special beers for that. Cheers. 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 Well, I sincerely hope you enjoyed today's show. If you'd like to subscribe to the show via your favorite podcast player app, then head over to thepodcraft.com and look for the subscribe links. You can also get all the links mentioned in this podcast, pictures of all the beers, and other good information at thepodcraft.com. The site also has links to send us email feedback and to connect with us on social media. In closing, please continue to recommend the Podcraft Beer Show to your craft beer friends and family members in your life. The more the merrier. Thank you so much for sharing your time and attention with us. For Chris and Charlie, this is Tech Guy Steve signing off for this week's The Podcraft Beer Show. Have a great rest of your day. The Podcraft Show is licensed under Creative Commons Attribution Share Alike 4.0 International. All rights reserved 2020 through 2021. The show is produced by AztecMedia.net. If you have questions, then please email thepodcraftpodcast at gmail.com. Fair use notice. Reference material and media have been placed within this medium for informational, educational, and discussion purposes only, and compliance with fair use criteria established in Section 107 of the Copyright Act of 1976. It should also be noted that the opinions expressed on this podcast are those of the participants and are not endorsed by the participants' previous, current, or future employers or advertisers. You still here? It's over. Go home. Go.